Hello, my friends. Welcome to EdTech with Adam. Today, we're continuing our collaborative annotation or uh, group reading comparison series where we're looking at some different collaborative annotation platforms and seeing which one does what. So hopefully you can find the perfect group reading or collaborative annotation platform for your class. So today we're moving on to Perusal, which has been around for quite a while, but I've only heard it mentioned here or there. So it's something that I've always wanted to get a closer look at. So today we're doing just that. So starting right here, once you log in, uh, this is the interface that's kind of a standalone. You can use it right from their website. Of course, they're also available on uh, some different learning management systems as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for now, here's the main screen, and we haven't added anything yet in terms of resources, so we're going to go straight to our handy-dandy openstacks.org uh, astronomy text. Now, one of the things, and I've, as you can see from the table here, I have uh, shifted things a little bit. So we're going to talk right away about what kinds of things we can import. And one of the cool things about Perusal is we can, uh, of course, copy and paste stuff. We can load in documents, all that kind of stuff. Or in this case, we can, instead of copy and pasting this page, we can just take the web address. So I have copied this URL. And if I hop back over to Perusal, and I'm in Documents, I can go over to the right side here, click Add. And you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff. Like I said, you can bring in documents from your computer, Dropbox, uh, textbook folder. You can even buy textbooks through this platform as well, which is quite interesting. The one thing that you can't really import is images. And while you can import images in a PDF file or something like that, and what I'll cover a little bit later is how it seems like they used to have that function, but don't really anymore. But we're going to use web page, and that's just very useful for what we're doing right now. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to Control V to get our OpenStax address there. Click OK. Now, what I noticed here is it actually takes quite a while to load. So I'm going to skip ahead to where it's finished loading. Okay, so it's all loaded up here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on open because I want to open this up and uh, take a look at it. And uh, you can see there are a few kind of issues with uh, opening up websites. Clearly it doesn't know exactly what to open uh, or copy in terms of text, but that's okay. It looks like it has the actual text here. And uh, so let's jump right into our next things on the table, which are collaborative features. So uh, collaborative annotation here. First of all, let's make a few annotations. I'll go in here, I'll click on this paragraph here and highlight the first sentence. And just like a lot of the platforms, you know, it gives you a little box here. So moving down the table here, in terms of what we can annotate with, you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff. You can have math functions, emojis in this one as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can put in some code, images, links, videos, and you can even post anonymously as well. Uh, but in terms of just the multimodality, in terms of the approaches that you can use for collaborative annotation, this is great. It gives you a lot of options. So for this one, we could say like what we usually do, what is your favorite planet? And we could even put in some pictures. So let me grab some pictures here. So images, I can take a picture of Earth here and insert that. Uh, it also allows you to insert video. If I click on this, it'll ask for a YouTube clip. So let's jump over to YouTube and just grab something really quick. Okay, I'm on YouTube. I just control C copied that URL. Let's hop back over to perusal and control V and press okay. Let's see. All right, so that loads in there. Great, so you can bring in videos and picture, uh, very great. So that's what it looks like when you put in the text, the video and pictures. Uh, now in terms of audio, I don't see any audio input option here, but you could of course link an audio file or you could have the audio file maybe in the form of video on uh, Vimeo or YouTube available for students to listen to. All right, so let's press enter. And there we go, we've made our first annotation. Let's just make a couple more here, uh, like we usually do. I'll go through here and do this one. Wow, that's high, isn't it? Now something also interesting about uh, 
perusal is you'll notice that when you do an annotation with a question, it gets tagged automatically as a question when you put a question mark. Uh, this one as well, you can see that it's tagged automatically with a question mark. Let's take a look at a collaborative annotation that isn't a question. Maybe instead of uh, starting a conversation with a question, it's starting one with a strong statement. So we could find our radio and television and do this and say, uh, Tiger King is the best TV show ever. And you can see here that it didn't tag it with uh, a question mark. However, we can also deliberately tag it as a question as well, just, uh, you know, if you want to turn that on or off. Now, before we look at responses to annotations, uh, let's take a look at another thing in addition to this, which is whether or not we can assign some kind of completion requirements. And it's something we can do here. So if I go up to the top here and go to the previous screen, uh, you can see that I do have the document, but I don't have any assignments available yet. So I can click on this add assignment green button and it'll give me an option for the content I want to assign. Uh, and in this case, I only have one piece, which is my astronomy piece. I'll choose that. And you can choose what you want to assign, whether you want to assign uh, the whole document or just a part of the document. Uh, and I'm just going to click over to next. Submission details. When is it due? How about Friday? Assignment name. Uh, astronomy. Uh, collaborative annotation and uh, finally instructions annotate at least two things and respond to at least two other comments so now my students know that I have kind of a requirement for them what I'd like them to do I'm just going to click next and uh, it asks me here, how many annotations do I want to grade? Now, Perusal actually has a built-in uh, grading system where it analyzes the students' annotations based on the length and amount of detail in it. I'm not exactly sure how it works in a lot of detail, but in order to use it, you also have to have at least 15 students in the class, and I do not here, so we're not going to be seeing that system today. And also, that's not the whole point of today. Today, the point is collaborative annotation. So. Uh, assignments visible to students, let's say starting today, it's already available, and uh, assigned to specific students. So I can choose the students in my class I want to assign it to if I want to. And uh, assignment, is it anonymous? Is it optional? You can do a lot of interesting things here. So I'm going to click Save. So now there's uh, an assignment, and you can see here that we have a whole bunch of uh, analytics that we can see so we can keep track of what the students do. So let's jump over to the student account, try making some annotations and responding to some annotations, and see what happens on the screen here. Okay, so I just jumped over to the student page. I go over and click on assignments, and it shows that I have an assignment. It's not yet opened for the astronomy document. Let's work on this. So once again, we're going to go down here. We can see the annotations made by the teacher and click on those. Now, like I said, we have to respond to at least two. So I can say, what's your favorite planet? My favorite planet is Saturn. And press Enter. Great. And I'm going to respond to one more here. Uh, this was a, a comment, and maybe I'm starting an argument. No, it's not. Power Rangers is the best whatever it doesn't really matter so that's my two responses let's do two annotations here as well so i'm just going to choose two things maybe i'll make a question uh, here what is your favorite apollo mission and one more let's make one more question here to satisfy a requirement let's go to uh, 150 million kilometers away we could say how many light years is that okay so we've got some annotations in here. So we've clearly done something on this assignment. So a couple last things before we take a look at the grading procedure. First of all, one of the questions is, can we edit this? Can we go through and change this text? And the answer is no. So whether you're on a teacher or a student account, you cannot edit the original text. This, again, is really good because for collaborative annotation platforms, we want students to be doing group reading and engaging in discussions. But if a student can just go in, highlight, and delete a whole chunk of it, it kind of ruins the experience for everybody else. And that sort of platform is better used for collaborative writing rather than collaborative reading. And the other thing is, like I mentioned earlier, we can't really annotate pictures. 
And this is something that I think is interesting because uh, it looks like when I searched for it in the help box here, and I search for the pin dropping function that they used to have, uh, you can actually see here that they mention that if you can't highlight it, you can use the tool uh, as shown here. There's a, a figure annotation option and there's a screenshot of it here. But if you look up here in the actual interface, that uh, it looks a little bit different. So most likely they either phased it out or they've upgraded it and moved it. And I've been searching all over for it and haven't been able to find it yet. And I haven't been able to find any updated guides for it on the internet. So if you know or anyone knows how to do this, please let me know because that's a really great feature. But unfortunately, as I can't find it, I have to say that it's not possible right now in this platform. Okay, let's hop back over to the teacher view. And from here, I'm going to go back to my class and we're gonna check out the grading because as you remember, we assigned some requirements for grading. So I'm gonna click on students and from here I can email the students, kick them out of the class, download all of their annotations, which could be useful for record keeping sake or if you're one of those people who likes to print it out and be able to uh, read it and mark it with your pen, then that's also possible. But here I'm just gonna go down to the assignment. We only have one, the astronomy piece, so let's find it. And here it shows us very easily that uh, Chris did two responses, so one, two, and he also did two annotations, which is exactly what I asked for. And it also tells you what the student wrote, which is really cool because again, for grading, this is very useful to be able to filter out individual students. And like I mentioned before, there is a special automated grading feature, but it's only available when you have at least 15 students in the classroom. So unfortunately we can't show that, but it's okay. We're looking at the collaborative annotation features today. So there's one last thing. We see that we can filter out students in a way, but what about in the actual text? So I'm gonna go back to the document and open it up. And as you can see, we can uh, open up all of the annotations on one window here and take a look at them. In terms of picking them out on the page, while there isn't really a color coding scheme or anything, when you hold your mouse over top of it, it tells you who did the annotation. And even, and this is unique, I think only to perusal so far amongst all the platforms we've covered, uh, it actually shows if there's more than one student. So it shows here there are two of us who annotated and responded on this. And uh, meanwhile, on ones that were just one of us, it says clearly that just one of us did that. And I think that's a great feature because it makes it very clear for the teachers very easily just hold your mouse over top and you can see who did that annotation. All right, so now let's talk about compliancy. So this platform was developed at Harvard. It is fully FERPA compliant, but unfortunately all of the data is stored in American servers. So for all of us in Canada who need to have a FIPA compliant platform, that could be a little bit difficult. Now, I'm sure if you got in touch with the people over at Perusal, you could probably try to come to an agreement, uh, but still it's something that will take extra work and extra time for your IT staff to kind of work through. Finally, in terms of the learning technology interoperability uh, and how it functions with different learning management systems, Perusal, because it's been around for so long, it already works with a lot of LMSs. So it works with all the big ones like uh, Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, Sakai. Uh, unfortunately, they don't list Google Classroom as one of their supported LMSs. Uh, which again is unfortunate because there are a great deal of schools that are currently using that. And that's also something that perhaps they could work towards if they haven't already and just haven't posted about it on their website yet. All right, that's it for Perusal. I hope this helped you make some good choices about which collaborative annotation or group reading platform you want to use with your classes. If you have any challenges or things that you really want to find a solution for, please let me know and I'd be happy to go through and compare some different platforms, make some recommendations, and help a lot of people who likely have the same problem that you do. As always, please remember if you like this and you think your colleagues would benefit, share it with your friends and your colleagues. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe and leave me some comments. Let me know what you think and what you'd like me to do in the future because I'd really like to help you and everyone who needs help with EdTech to make their classes awesome. All right, so once again, I am Adam, your personal EdTech specialist and stay healthy.